So good afternoon. We are as a city and county uh, partner agencies joining you all this afternoon um, to just reassure our public as Hurricane Florence fast approaches. Um, the City of Columbia has been working in partnership with South Carolina EMD and our county officials for several days. Um, we are ready and prepared. But as we've done in years past, when we unfortunately have faced similar weather events, we've learned that one of the most important things we can do as a city for our community is to stay current with information. And so today we just wanted to invite our partner agencies um, to join us in sharing some information as we know it right now. We'll continue to do this on a fairly regular basis so that the public remains informed. Um, we'll start with some uh, opening comments from Mayor Steve Benjamin, who you've probably seen on the Weather Channel and other outlets. He's just coming from an interview, as a matter of fact. And we'll probably be doing a lot of that in the upcoming days. So we'll go down the list of some information sharing from him and then some departmental updates to include our um, pertinent city departments, as well as um, some information from Sheriff Leon Lott and some of our other partner agencies. And then I'll come back up and help you with any questions and answers. Mayor Benjamin. Thank you, thank you Teresa. No, I, did, I did just leave an interview with the Weather Channel and I tell them everyone loves the Weather Channel. We just don't like when you're in our city uh, <laughs> because it usually means that uh, there's nothing good uh, happening. Um, I know we've all been, um, closely paying attention to the governor's um, reports and I want to encourage everyone within the sound of our voice if, uh, if the governor has, has indicated the importance of you evacuating uh, wherever you are to please heed his warning. Uh, we are hosting our citizens here from all across the state in, um, in Columbia and in Richland County, uh, Richland 2. It's been a fantastic host at, at um, Ridgeview High School. I had a chance to visit them last night. You're welcome here and, and we will treat you uh, just as friends and, 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 and family. Evacuate if the governor says evacuate. For our citizens here in the Midlands, we recognize the importance of sharing locally relevant and pertinent information, not just from the city, but all of our, our sister uh, agencies and our friends. And we have, of course have representatives of the business community uh, here with us from Congressman Clyburn's office. And we're, before we're done, we're gonna make sure we go through so you all know the relevant agencies that are here. If you have specific questions uh, that you might be able to um, ask of, of what our different um, partners, uh, the county, school district, and others are doing, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, I will say that um, it's daunting uh, to, to see the title uh, storm of a lifetime uh, under Hurricane Florence. And we want to make sure that uh, each of our citizens, all of our citizens know that we are working together. Uh, we're preparing for any and every eventuality. We learned a great deal. Um, the experience of 2015 uh, working together, the value of experience is obviously you hopefully you take something away from it. Experience can be a painful teacher. Uh, seeing over 500 roads washed out, dozens of dams, uh, $12 billion worth of damage to our state and losing 19 precious lives is a lesson that um, you gotta learn from. If you don't learn from, uh, then we'd all be derelict in our duties. Uh, we learned so much more about being prepared and I am so encouraged by the work I've seen uh, from our city staff, uh, from Ms. Wilson and her entire team. Uh, our sheriff is already always on, on the ball, the partnership and the focus on, on, on what it means to be public servants by our, our school districts, making sure that not only are we uh, educating, but we're making sure that the entirety of our children uh, is being taken care of as we feed our babies over, over these uh, days while school's out and working closely with our, our leaders at the, at the county. Uh, there's so much more uh, that needs to be done, however. Uh, I don't want people to be fooled uh, by this beautiful weather we have outside. This is the calm before the storm. This is the calm before the storm. Over the next several days, uh, we will see rainfall. Um, if, if all the forecasts are, are true, unlike anything we've ever seen before. And we've got to make sure that we're preparing for that right now. As we prepare, to keep our community safe. Let's make sure we don't put ourselves in unnecessary danger and detract from our professional law enforcement and emergency responders doing the work that they need to do. Let's not do that. Let's make sure that we're preparing our families uh, to potentially shelter in place. And let's make sure, again, that we keep uh, at heart what it means to be Columbia strong, what it means to be South Carolina strong. 
that we're taking care of our sick and shut-in neighbors, that we're looking after some of our friends that may be a bit more fragile. Uh, by doing this together, we'll, we'll weather the storm just as we did in 2015, and we'll come out even stronger than we were going in. So uh, I want to thank our friends in the media for being here. I want to encourage people to follow the City of Columbia on, um, on social media, um, at City of Columbia, uh, both on Twitter and, and, and Instagram. Follow our Facebook page. Monitor our website, ColumbiaSC.net. Obviously, if you have any emergencies, you call 911. If you do not have emergencies, we have a customer care line at 803-545-3300. Stay in touch. Uh, the world is a lot different now. We receive all of our information from different sources. Let's, let's share good information, uh, empowering information, uh, edifying information that helps us all get through this very difficult time together. Uh, and thank you. I want to thank, of course, um, on, on the record, all of our, our friends in the media uh, for, for your, your diligent uh, coverage of this incredible storm. Um, I want to step aside, and um, I think uh, we're going to go into departmental uh, updates. I'm not sure if you want to emcee um, uh, Ms. Wilson or just ask, ask the Sorry, great chief of police, Sorry, Skip Holbrook. Yes. Come on up, brother. Good afternoon. Um, quick update from uh, Columbia Police Department. Um, I think the, uh, I hope the important takeaway uh, for the public when we meet such as this is reassurance that we are prepared, working as a team, ready to respond um, immediately to protect life and property. Um, our operational readiness is, is high. We have pre-staged um, equipment, high water equipment um, and materials uh, at, at our five different regions. We pre-staged barricades at areas we know are uh, flood prone where we have water that rises quickly. Um, our officers are prepared to uh, close roads um, uh, immediately when we see some of the significant rainfall that we're, we're expected. Um, we will have teams with the high water vehicles for rescue purposes along with um, the Sheriff's Department and the Fire Department and with chainsaws if we need to clear roadways. We wanna keep roadways um, clear quickly so we can operate emergency equipment and um, if we need to get medical help to somebody or medical transport. Um, I think what you will see, um, like you have learned to see with us, is seamless public safety operations between the city police department, uh, the county sheriff's department, and our fire department. Um, that's what will be second to none. Um, we, we know that um, there are no boundaries and territories in, in times of crisis, and um, quite frankly with us, it's. Um, an everyday operational posture, and that's our philosophy, and I think it's, it's paid dividends. Um, it's, you know, we will be the eyes and ears on, during the storm. Uh, we will be prepared to, uh, to respond at a moment's notice, and, and again, you know, our goal is to save lives and protect life and property, and we will be staffed up and prepared to, to do so. Um, there has been mentions of, mentioned of a curfew, and so I'll address it right now. There's been no decisions. Those decisions on the curfews uh, would, would come from input from myself and, and the sheriff, um, and our elected officials and the city manager would make the appropriate uh, call on that if necessary. Thank you. As the mayor said, we've learned a lot in the past three years, and. I think we're better prepared now than we've ever been. Um, what you will see is public safety teams working together, fire department, police department, sheriff's department. We have strike teams that are ready to go out. Uh, these teams are equipped to handle any type of emergency. We've got boats, we've got four wheelers, we've got trucks, we've got chainsaws, we've got any, anything that we need to go and rescue people. That's our first priority is to make sure people are safe. So we're prepared to do that. Uh, the next is protect property. We're not going to allow uh, bad guys to get out here and rob and steal and take advantage of, of this disaster. So um, there's zero tolerance for that. This is a state of emergency. It's also the county's declared emergency. So there's laws that are in effect now that enhances those penalties if we catch someone out there. So you know, we just want people to understand that law enforcement's out there in full force. Um, we've got an army. When you put all of our agencies together, we've got an army to go out there and protect Richland County and the City of Columbia, and we're going to do that. So uh, you'll see us together as a team. We're ready. Whatever happens with Florence, we're ready and prepared to address it. I'm not going to repeat everything that was said. I think the sheriff and, and the chief said, said it all. 
um, as far as us working together. You know, it's always a great opportunity. Uh, we don't like these opportunities at, at this point, but it's always a great opportunity to work with my, t with my two um, partners in crime. <laughs> they, they in crime, I'm just in fire. <laughs> but um, just want to emphasize, you know, th this, is a, this is a storm that's coming up, and we just want to encourage the folks out there to, to be safe. You know, um, there could be tree, trees toppling over, there could be power lines down, you may lose power at your homes. Just make sure that uh, when you, if you see a down power line, don't go near it. Just treat it as live. If you have a tree that toppled over in your house, get out if you can, and make sure you call us, dial 911. Just remember uh, when we got flood waters, um, always remember the acronym, turn around, don't drown, because you don't know how deep that water is. And we're just encouraging people to, to just to stay home, you know, and stay off the road, because one thing about it, if we get winds in excess of about 50 miles per hour, you probably won't, it's probably gonna be some delay in response, uh, because we won't be out there anything over 50 miles per hour. We're gonna wait until it come down. So just, just be safe out there. And if you do have to use, if you do lose power in your home, um, always remember if you're going to use candles, uh, we don't advocate that you use them. We want to make sure you get a flashlight. But if you have to use candles, please do not leave them unattended. And I know that there is always talk about using um, generators. You know, if you use a generator, especially portable generators, uh, remember do not use them on the inside. Do not even use them inside of a garage. Uh, if you have to refuel and wait until they cool down, you know, uh, so just make sure you use those, those safety precautions. And what we're trying to do is pump out uh, safety information as, as much as we can. So we're using all our social media um, out, outlets to pump out safety, uh, safety concern. And the one thing that we're using now is, is called Next Door Neighbor. And we've been able to reach uh, about 12,000 people using Next Door Neighbor. So uh, if you can download that app, but also even reverse 911. If we have to pump uh, information out there, we will do so. So, you know, this is not an event that I look forward to, but I know it's something we have to deal with. So we're going to do everything we can to keep the public safe. Good afternoon. I'm Clint Sheely, Assistant City Manager for Columbia Water. Um, I want to let our citizens and customers know that we've been monitoring this, this storm very closely. Um, anticipating um, both an intense and, and a long duration rainfall event and also the winds that may be coming. Um, from a water system perspective and a water supply perspective, we have been going through our emergency operation procedures and preparing at our treatment plants. We've topped off in our critical pumping stations. We've topped off our generators with fuel and exercised that equipment. Um, we have a, a, an ample supply of treatment chemicals and supplies. We have staffing plans in place in case our employees would need to stay for extended durations. Um, so, so we're ready for that. We'll be topping off our, our storage tanks and our distribution system and be ready in the event that, um, that, that we may have something that would impact our, our distribution piping network. Many of you may be asking questions about our, our canal, our water source for half of our, our treatment uh, and, and water distribution system. Uh, we have been running computer simulations of the hydrology of the canal system um, looking at anticipated precipitation levels and, and what that might mean for water levels coming into our canal and also river levels that, that feed our canal system. We are managing the inflow and the outflow into that canal system in a different way than we were in 2015. Um, we have a temporary solution from the flooding that occurred in 2015 and the breach of our canal, but it is a very robust temporary solution. So um, we feel, feel confident in that solution. But should, um, should something tragic happen and we have another breach, we also have emergency pumps both in place and on the way, piping and equipment necessary to repair that breach and to supply water to our treatment plant in the event that a breach did occur. So we feel like we're prepared there. Um, on our wastewater system, we're managing our collection system to make sure that, that, to, that we minimize any disruption in service and any overflows of sanitary sewer that might happen during a heavy rainfall event. So we're doing that. We've got emergency pumping equipment ready and on standby if needed. Um, and so we're operating that system in a way to be ready for, for what is coming for us. 
Uh, stormwater improvements, we've been investing heavily in our stormwater infrastructure. We've made a key tie-in there on Bull Street near Wallace Street. We think that tie-in that happened this week is going to help reduce possibly some flash flooding that may occur in the Cottontown neighborhood. We've also are nearing completion of some, of some stormwater detention improvements at MLK Park that may reduce some of the, the localized flooding in that area should we have high intensity rainfall. I just want to, again, assure our customers our team is working very, very hard to ensure that, that we're as prepared as we possibly can be and that, that we don't have any interruption in, in service to our customers. If you do, if you're a water customer or a wastewater customer of the City of Columbia, if you do have an interruption in service or if you have any non-emergency storm-related questions, just as the Mayor said, please call our customer care hotline at 803 545-3300. That is manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we'll be happy to, to answer any questions and, and take your, your issues. As everybody knows, it sounds like everybody's preparing, and Public Works has also been preparing. Over the last few days, we've looked at our stormwater system. We know that we needed to clean some storm drains, so we've cleaned our storm drainage system as much as we could. We've checked our creeks, we've checked our bridges to make sure that there are no obstructions within these pipes. So if there is a rainfall that we can handle somewhat of a downpour at a limited, at a, at a limited time. We've also are asking people to suspend putting yard trash on the street for a while. Yard trash in a heavy rain can actually wash into the storm drains and actually uh, cause some local flooding. With that, our solid waste crews are continuing to work. I believe the city is actually uh, shut down tomorrow, but our solid waste crews on Friday will be picking up their normal schedules. And if they finish their Friday collection route on their trash, they will be going and looking at areas in the city to make sure that if any piles are out there that we feel could cause flooding that we will address those. Our forestry division, along with our street division, also has been working and making sure our chainsaws are ready and making sure the, 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 that our employees, uh, we just held a chainsaw safety class a few minutes ago just to make sure that everybody was aware. Our traffic engineering division has built controllers for all the areas that flooded during the 2015 flood so they can throw a controller in and bring the, the, the traffic lights back up. In a, in a quicker manner so we don't have to put four-way stops. But we also want to make sure our crews are safe. And I believe like the fire chief said, we want to make sure everybody stays safe. So our crews are going to stay safe by if it gets too windy, we are going to stay in and not respond as quick. But we also want to remind citizens, and I don't think we can say this enough, if it's a limb in the road or a tree in the road, there could be a line in there and that line could be energized. We do not want somebody grabbing onto that tree and getting electrocuted. Let that to the professionals. Call the 545-3300 number and let our crews respond so they know what to look for if those trees are down. If there's a live wire in it, we're going to barricade the street off and notify the police and fire department that that street's blocked off. But we also want to make sure we don't drive through standing water. We don't know what's in the water. We do not know how fast the water's moving. And three feet of water, I believe, will move a car and actually float a car. So we want to make sure that we do that. So our crews are ready to respond. They are, have been trained for this, and in the time of need, we will be there. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Baron Davis, Superintendent of Richland School District 2. Uh, as many of you know, we are under uh, the order of the governor to keep schools closed until further notice. And so as we're anticipating uh, the release of that order, we'll continue with uh, Many of the agendas that we have set uh, in our district, um, one, uh, we're serving as a shelter uh, here in Richland School District 2 at Ridgeview High School. Uh, there's plenty of space, so those of you who are traveling and coming to Richland County, to Columbia, uh, you can uh, seek shelter at Ridgeview High School. Uh, as a final count of today, or um, the last count of the day, I think we have roughly about 80 uh, people who have already uh, seek shelter uh, at that location. We've also been serving lunch um, for our students uh, at two locations uh, in the district, at Dent Middle School and also at Ridgeview High School. Um, and so today was the first day of our lunch operation. We will continue that operation tomorrow. Uh, that time will be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're also providing lunch to those individuals uh, with our partners, um, our food service partners um, that are at the shelter, are also receiving uh, breakfasts and lunch as well. 
Um, we'll continue to monitor the system throughout the weekend along with the city and the county uh, in preparations for decisions that need to be made uh, following Monday and Tuesday. Um, please follow uh, our social media sites uh, at Richland 2, uh, our website at richland2.org, as well as you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and Instagram at Richland 2 uh, for, for updated and uh, more information. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we at the Comet, uh, we are prepared uh, to work with each of the counties that we serve, both Richland, Lexington counties, as well as the City of Columbia, to be able to provide transportation for evacuees or whatever transportation needs that need to occur. We are also going to be suspending service uh, starting today at 5.30. All of our trips that are on the road will complete its last round trip starting at 5.30 so that we can have our vehicles back in the garage by approximately 8 o'clock. We will have a lifeline type of dial ride service for any of those passengers that we've missed so that we can ensure that they're uh, back to safety. We will be um, monitoring and working collaboratively with our local governments so that uh, once we're able to safely resume service, we'll be prepared to do so. And I would encourage our passengers to contact us at 803-255-7113, which is our uh, interruption service hotline, where they can get up to minute information on our service levels, as well as visit us at catchthecomet.org or our social media, which is Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you. Uh, 7118, I'm sorry, 803-255-7118. Good afternoon, I'm Craig Witherspoon, Superintendent, Richland County School District 1. And uh, similar to what Dr. Davis had said, we have been closed uh, since Tuesday on the governor's uh, order, but since that time we've continued to serve meals for our students. And over the last two days, we've served uh, close to 1,000 uh, meals at various sites across the city. And I wanna say uh, certainly thank you to our administrators uh, teachers uh, that have helped in that effort. Uh, also, we stand ready, certainly with the Sheriff's Department, with the uh, City of Columbia, uh, on the, the back side of this event, just in case there are additional uh, shelters that are needed, depending on flooding, depending on electricity, power, and those things. We stay in constant contact, certainly with the Sheriff's Department and with the City, uh, as we did in 15, and we will continue to do at this point as well. And I uh, would like to say certainly to our parents and our students during this time, of course, be safe. Uh, but if there are some lessons and some instruction and things that uh, can go on, I know our teachers have been online with students and, and parents and uh, can, learning never stops. Uh, but, but we certainly want you to be safe uh, in the meantime. And again, we stand ready to work uh, very collaboratively with everyone that's uh, that's a part of this as a part of the safety team here in Columbia and here in Richland County. Hi, I'm Chip Jackson from Richland County Council and uh, my presence here is to represent the lockstep effort that Richland County Council is having with City Council and to let everyone out there know that uh, just today, the, or just yesterday, the uh, Chair of County Council declared a state of emergency so that access will be made available uh, throughout this county and you can be reassured that we're working arm in arm. Also another thing that's happened is that in addition to being able to call 911, you will now be able to text 911 uh, in addition to making that phone call while weather permits that they'll be able to get to you. Uh, we are not only just one Columbia, we're one Richmond County and that's very important because everyone needs to know that we are one community and it doesn't matter what part of Richmond County you live in or what part of the city you live in you are just as important to everyone else. So keep that in mind, don't hesitate to reach out and stay in touch with the website to make sure that you are aware of all of the changes because one of the things that we've noticed is that this, this storm is constantly changing. But as it changes and adjusts, we're doing the same thing as a city and as a county working together. Thank you very much. Obviously, Con Congressman Clyburn's office is, is here, and uh, I find that uh, Dalton Tresman here representing the congressman, uh, along with some of our representatives from Palmetto Health have been uh, present in all of our emergency uh, briefings and, and actively participating. Have our um, members of city council here with us, our mayor pro tem, Tamika Devine, 
Councilman Daniel Rickman, Councilman Howard Duvall, and Councilman Sam Davis uh, all here uh, with us. Uh, um, we have the leaders from our business community here, uh, Carl Blackstone, the chairman, the president and CEO of our, our Columbia Chamber of Commerce, and Matt Kennel, uh, the um, CEO and president of our City Center Partnership as well. Of course, Monica Elkins Johnson, uh, Richland School District 2, uh, also here with us uh, as well. Um, and I think I've gotten just about everyone. Of course, uh, our dear friend Jamie Devine, who I, I see is dressed just like the superintendent today uh, <laughs> in, ma in, ma in matching outfits and fantastic. <laughs> Rich, <laughs> Richard in one gear, we, uh, which, apparent, which apparently we have not yet invested in at the City of Columbia uh, <laughs> as well. Um, but it, the, it's important to note we're all here. We're working together. We are interfacing with um, all of our nonprofit partners uh, as well, from Columbia Cares, United Way, the Central Carolina Community Foundation, interfacing closely with the University of South Carolina. We're working together in the interests of the entire community, and we will continue to do so. And we're going to prepare for any eventuality, and we're going to hope and pray for the for the very best. Um, uh, we'll bring Teresa back up, and any questions that you all have, um, as as you can tell from the. Uh, uh, presentations. We have some incredible um, subject matter uh, experts here, uh, maybe to answer some of your specific questions. And I'm, I'm proud of the work, as I told them yesterday, incredibly proud of the work that our team's doing, uh, working together. Uh, first, any of my colleagues, if any of you wants to, this, this, to speak as well? Uh, we're good? Okay. Questions? Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I Please. did want to address the fact that the city offices will be closed tomorrow, sure. just out of an abundance of caution. Um, city offices will be a close will be closed. That really doesn't mean much for the city of Columbia. 90% of our staff are essential. We will be working and you will see that. Um, but again, don't be fooled by these bright sunny days and we anticipate some changing over the course of the day tomorrow. But again, out of abundance of caution for some of our staff who you know, maybe don't have to be on the ground, which is not many, but for those, we'll close city offices and also to be in lockstep with state agencies and the work that really has to be done preparing for the weekend. So that is the, the reality of the situation. It's the best decision. I believe the county is also doing that as well as far as closing county offices. Um, I wanted to acknowledge our emergency management director who likes to be in the background, Harry Tinsley. Wave your hand, Harry. Um, Harry is really the glue that holds these tight incidents together for us as far as the staff that you heard speak to you, our public safety officials and others, but there's an abundance of staff behind the scenes from finance to public and media relations that make all of this work and certainly are my experts and I appreciate them uh, more than I could ever say. Um, any questions? Please make sure you remember the 545-3300 number that's been mentioned for non-emergencies and pertinent information. Every day the city's website at columbiasc.net will be updated with an incident response brief, which will have lots of the information in it that we've talked about. Um, another partner, Mayor Benjamin, would be SCE&G, and so all of their information about outages, we'll, we'll be posting that widely as well. Thank you, Chris. Great question. Uh, we've been getting that a lot. Um, I think one of the one of the key things is um, prior to the flood of 2015, um, we, we at our Headgate Inlet to the to the canal, we we um, the the great flow that came from the flooding um, brought with it a lot of debris, and that um, you know, kept us from closing completely and choking off the flow coming into the canal. We have. 11 of the 12 head gates are closed now with a bulkhead. So we're operating one and we're actually closing that gate this afternoon to minimize any flow that might come in. So we're from a control of flow into the canal, we're in a much better position. Um, we also, again, we've got a, a temporary solution in place. The hydroelectric facility is not operating. We've got this rock dam in, pl in place, but that dam was designed very quickly, but very robustly structurally to serve as an overtopping spillway to give us excess capacity to let water flow out of the canal should we have a large amount coming in. 
The earthen embankment was not designed for overtopping. This rock dam is designed for overtopping, and it was constructed at a lower elevation, so that is an extra relief point. So those two are the, probably the primary things that are in place for the canal system itself. The other um, primary component, you know, we put in a bypass emergency pumping system from the river in response to the canal breach in 2015. We learned from that experience that equipment is now staged and ready to be deployed should we, in the unlikely event that we would need to do that. I believe in, two, in 2015, the rain came at a very good clip. You know, this will be bands of rain. So if we can have some time for some of our, our, our roads to drain off into the creeks and then down to the river, it gives us a better time to recover. So it's gonna depend on how much, how fast the rains do come and at what intensity they come. I know the uh, uh, Chief Holbrook mentioned that we've pre-staged barricades at certain locations. That's something we learned from 2015. We never did that before. So we know the hot spots in the city of Columbia. So the barricades are there. So we can shut the roads down a little bit quicker. But we've also learned about the traffic controllers that if they get flooded out, we've already pre-built them so we can get the intersections back up. You know, a lot of times flash flooding happens and then 45 minutes or an hour later, it's gone. So that's what we're prepared for. Yes, most of uh, the DHEC apparently issued an order to lower most of the dams in. We've actually reached out to Lake Catherine. They're lowering their dam down two feet. Several other dams, I believe Southeast Park in the city have been lowered also, but a lot of the dams in Richland County have been lowered as a result of that. And many of you may also remember that um, just uh, over a year ago, city council but unanimously uh, to fund our very first stormwater bond in, in the city to address the top 20 flooding locations in the city. Voted unanimously, again, I might add, nearly $100 million. Uh, a couple of those projects are currently under construction and, and would seek to mitigate some of the uh, flooding. Uh, you know, Clint mentioned MLK Park and I believe Wallace uh, Street as well, currently under construction. Nine more are currently in design. So we're, we're seeing some uh, um, significant long-term improvements on the way for, for, the, for, the, for the city. And I'm, I'm proud of the work that staff is doing there. Other questions? Thank you all.